All right, this lesson is about macromolecules. Macromolecules. All right, when we talk about macromolecules, you got to talk about organic compounds. All right, what does it mean to be organic? Right now, you know, you hear everything that's organic. Organic lettuce, organic cereal, organic, you know, car wash solution. There's organic everything. Um, compounds that contain carbon are called organic. Anything that contains carbon is organic. All right, that's what we're going to focus on in, in this class. Um, I'm sorry about that. Macromolecules are large organic, mar um, large organic molecules. All right, that's what a mic macro molecule is. Macro means big, the first part of the word, and molecule, you know, it's a molecule. All right, so large molecule. All right, uh, another term for macromolecules is polymers. Polymers, that's a generalized broad term all right polymers they're made up of smaller building blocks called monomers all right so monomers make up polymers and polymers are made of monomers all right um let's see what kind of example we can get all right here are the four types of macromolecules you have carbohydrates lipids proteins and nucleic acids Make sure you get comfortable saying those words, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. All right, so the function of uh, carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, they break down to form uh, usable um, energy. So they give you immediate energy. That's what carbohydrates do. They give you e immediate usable energy. All right, they're composed of uh, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen which includes sugars and starches. So, you know, if you eat some fruit, you know, that, that's, that, there's sugars in there, you know, but um, like carbohydrates, like if you eat, you know, a Snickers or um, pasta, rice, bread, things like that. All right, there are three types of carbohydrates we're gonna talk about. Um, the monosaccharide, you could say that, monosaccharide, disaccharide, and polysaccharide. All right. If you look at those words, they all have saccharide in it, right? So that's, you know, once you find out what saccharide is, then you're good. Um, mono, that prefix just means one. Di, that prefix means two. And poly, that prefix means many. Okay? So the saccharide, that's actually just a sugar unit. So it pretty much means sugar. So one sugar for the monosaccharide, disaccharide, two sugars, polysaccharide, many sugars. All right, so the monosaccharide is one sugar unit. Example, glucose. All right, this is the molecular formula for uh, glucose right here, C6H12O6. But uh, deoxyribose, that's another one. Um, that word might sound familiar when you're talking about DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. Okay, that's the type of sugar. And ribose, like in RNA, uh, just another type of sugar. Fructose. That's some of the uh, fruit that's, I mean, the, um, the sugar that's in fruit. And you think about it, just glucose, remember that's monosaccharide. This is just using one, uh, one building block. All right, so carbohydrates. Uh, you got the other type, disaccharides. Remember, that's two sugar units. Di means two. Examples are sucrose, which is glucose and fructose mixed, lactose, which is glucose and galactose. Uh, lactose, that's the type of sugar you find in milk. You know, if you hear of people being lactose intolerant, which means they cannot process this uh, lactose sugar. And maltose, which is glucose in uh, basically two units of glucose. All right, and the diagram at the bottom, you get two of those sugar units. Remember, um, the monosaccharide was one sugar unit. You have two together, that's a disaccharide. All right, and third, you have a polysaccharide, which means, like I said earlier, many sugar units. Uh, the examples are starch, which are, you know, bread, potatoes, rice, things like that. Glycogen, uh, that's stored in our muscles, our muscle cells. We'll talk a little bit more about glycogen when we talk about um, uh, cellular respiration later on. And cellulose, you may have seen cellulose before when we talked about plants. They make up the cell wall of plants, okay, that's a starch. And there you go. When you have a polysaccharide, which means many, remember poly means many, many sugar units, you see all these different sugar units connected together.
and you have many of them, this is a polymer or technically a polysaccharide. Okay. The polymer, that's just the generalized term, meaning something that's made up of many other little things. Okay. <clears throat> All right. The next type of carbohydrate, I'm sorry, the next type of uh, macromolecule are lipids. Lipids are not soluble in water. All right, that means they don't mix with water well. You know how oil doesn't mix with water? Oil is a lipid. All right, so they're not soluble in water. They will not dissolve in water. Uh, chains of carbon bonded to oxygen and hydrogen. Okay, so th again, they're carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. Examples, fats, all right, oils. We talked about the phospholipid bilayer, how it has those lipid tails. Okay. It's just bringing up, you know, old vocabulary that we just used. Uh, waxes, even the waxes in your ears, that's, that's a form of a lipid. Or wax from candles, it's the same thing. Cholesterol, steroid ho hormones, uh, triglycerides. All right. Functions of lipids. All right, functions of lipids. Lipids give you long-term energy. Remember, we talked about carbohydrates earlier. Carbohydrates give you short-term energy quick, immediate energy. Um, lipids give you, you know, it's stored in fat, so it gives you long-term energy. Energy that you can access not immediately. If you need to go run a race, you wouldn't eat a whole lot of lipids, okay? If you needed to survive in the woods, you know, in woods and you didn't have any food for, you know, weeks, it would be good to already have a, a good amount of uh, lipids or fat on your body because that's energy storage. It stores long-term energy. All right, protect, pr protection against heat loss, kind of like insulation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Protection against physical shock. Uh, a good example is if you know someone get you know punched in the stomach, and they were extremely thin. You know they don't have much fat on their body, so it probably would hurt a little more than if you get punched in the stomach and you had several layers of fat covering your stomach. It works as an insulator and a shock preserver, or shock absorber. All right. And remember, it doesn't. Uh, doesn't mix well with water, so that's where you get the water loss. It will protect against water loss. And some lipids are you know, are hormones, like we talked about steroids earlier. And it's one of the major components of the cell membrane. Remember in the phospholipid bilayer. All right, um, you know how we talked about there's things that make up uh, that make up the polymer. The polymer are made up of those little small monomers. Um, the carbohydrates we just talked about, those are made up of monosaccharides. The carbohydrate is made up of monosaccharides. The, the um, types of lipids, the lipids are made up of fatty acids. That's at the top. Lipids are made up of fatty acids. All right? So that would be their monomer, fatty acids. I don't think we're going to talk much about um, saturated and unsaturated uh, fatty acids. But you need to know that, I guess, the unsaturated ones are better for you. Okay. All right, a triglyceride is, um, you know, they're in fats and oils, but a good example, they're composed of one glycerol and three fatty acids. So they look like that. You have the one glycerol and then one, two, three fatty acids attached to it, that's the structure of a triglyceride, okay? That's just, okay, that's just information that, you know, if you have a, a, a lot of triglycerides, you know, a high level of that, it can cause things like heart disease or heart attacks. Um, and this, uh, this information you probably will not be tested on, but it's just good to know. Um, going back to the question, what can cause high triglycerides? If you have a lack of exercise, being overweight, smoking, skipping meals, and then eating real large meals later. Uh, excessive intake of alcohol, sugar, starch, calories, saturated trans fats, and things like that. Okay, so those are just some causes you know, of high, which will get you high uh, triglycerides in your diet. I think we're going to skip this. That's just telling you that remember the cell membrane. It's made up of phospholipids. Okay. Uh, that's telling you that waxes are a type of lipids. All right. Um, 
earwax, beeswax, plants, leaves. Some of the um, some leaves actually have like a waxy coating on it. All right, they're pretty much waterproof, water resistant. That's cholesterol. Let's go back real quick. Um, many hormones are cholesterols. Okay, so you know if you think about testosterone, which is the male hormone that you know um, it's like a masculine hormone that males produce. Um, they produce a lot of it, and then women produce a lot of ex uh, estrogen. So you know just to keep you regular, but. Long story short, those are just examples of uh, uh, cholesterol, uh, lipids. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, now we're through with lipids. Let's talk about proteins. Proteins are also called polypeptides. Polypeptides, which means many peptides or many peptide bonds. All right. Um, proteins are made up of amino acids. So the monomer for proteins is amino acids. There are 20 different kinds. We'll talk about those when we... Um, We'll talk more about those when we get into RNA and DNA uh, transcription and translation later on in genetics. Um, they're bonded together by peptide bonds. Those are the different types of bonds. Uh, bonds, excuse me, peptide bonds. That's how the amino acids are uh, bonded together. Uh, proteins have several functions. All right, they, they help with storage, transport. Um, they keep you regular and you know help maintain homeostasis with the hormones they produce. Uh, they make up muscles, so they help with movement. Um, your skin, you know, your, your hair and your nails and things like that uh, are structurally <clears throat> made up of proteins. And then we, we start talking about enzymes next. You'll find out, you know, about cellular reactions and different reactions, chemical reactions that go on, you know, in your, um, on the cellular level. So basically they have six functions, storage, transport, uh, regulatory, movement, structural, and enzymes. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, now the sequence, meaning you know the order that they're in, the pattern that they're in, the sequence of amino acids determines the actual uh, protein structure and function. So it determines what the structure is going, you know, the protein is going to be built like, um, which meaning meaning which amino acids are in it, and also it determines what the function is going to be. Okay. We'll talk more about, like I said, the amino acids a little later. All right, finally, we're on to the nucleic acids. Nucleic acids, uh, there's two types. Uh, the ones that we talk about, we have the deoxyribonucleic acids, which is DNA, and it's structured like a double helix. And then you have the ribonucleic acid, which is the RNA, and it's single-stranded. All right, nucleic acids are composed of long chains of nucleotides. So that means that the nucleotides are the monomer for nucleic acids. I'll say that one more time. The monomer for nucleic acids are nucleotides. All right, so nucleotides pretty much contain the information that's needed in order to build proteins. Okay. Nucleic acids, let's see, they include a phosphate group, a pentose sugar, which is like a five carbon sugar, it looks like a five carbon ring, but that's kind of getting into a little extra chemistry. But you just need to know that they have a phosphate group, a sugar group, and a nitrogen base. Okay, like adenine, thymine, uracil, cytosine, and guanine. We usually just you know reference those adenine instead of saying adenine, we just say A. Instead of thymine, we say T which are only uh, located in DNA. And in uracil, we just say U, which is only located in, when you're talking about RNA. And then you have cytosine C, guanine G. And here's just an, you know, a, a diagram for you. You got the phosphate group, that circle. You got the sugar, which is the pentagon at the bottom. And then you got the hexagon at the top, which is the nitrogen base. So it's just telling you that in a nucleotide, you have those three parts, a phosphate group, a sugar, <clears throat> and a nitrogen base. 